God where you're at. Just thank God for you. My name's Pastor Leon Powell. I'm from Maryland in Clear Spring from a church called Mount Calvary Church of God. And just feeling an honor here today just to be with you and just minister the word with you today. So if you have your Bibles, if you could, turn with me to John chapter 13. Appreciate the selection of your worship. Uh, talking about the heart of Christ today. I just appreciate that. Appreciate that. Hallelujah. John chapter 13, we're going to look at verses 21 through 26, reading out of the New King James Version today, but just follow along with me, whatever version you have. It reads this, When Jesus had said these things, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Most assuredly I say to you, one of you will betray me. Then the disciples looked at one another, perplexed about who he spoke. Now, there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter, therefore, motioned to him and asked who it was of whom he spoke. Verse 25. Then, leaning back on Jesus' breast, he said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is he to whom I shall give a piece of bread when I have dipped it. And having dipped the bread, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon. Can we pray one more time? Father, thank you for the reading of the word of God. Lord, we just come here this morning, Lord, just to break open the bread of life. We thank you, Father, for, Lord, worshiping and, and giving, giving in our worship of, of, of praise and worship and of offerings. And, Lord, we just give back to you through the word that you've given to us. Lord, we just praise you for it. We thank you, Lord. Open our mind, open our heart, open our spirit, Father, that we may learn of you, that we may follow the direction of the Holy Spirit as you lead us this morning through this morning service. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious mighty name, amen and amen. <clears throat> you know... When you talk about the heart, and that's what I'm titling my message this morning, having the heart of Christ, you think about the heart itself. And the heart, it's a hollow muscle of about the size of your fist. It's between 8 to 12 ounces and is the body's perpetual motion system. It supplies blood to the body through its own circulatory system which is between 60 to 100 miles long, including 50 feet of arteries and veins and about 62,000 miles of capillaries. The heart pumps on the average of five quarts of blood per minute. That's about 2,000 gallons per day. A normal adult heart pumps at the rate of 70 to 75 times per minute. That's 42,000 beats an hour. That's approximately 36 million times a year, more than about two, two and a half billion times in a lifetime. Now, I, I thank God for this organ that God's put in our body because without the heart, we can't live. Without the heart pumping and flowing in our life, we're, the blood's not going to circulate throughout who, who, our own bodies. And so this morning, as we focus on the heart and, and all how it functions within our life, I want us to kind of view the heart in a different perspective if we can this morning. And so here we find, we read in our chapter, in our verse of John 13, we read where Jesus, uh, he's... At the, at the table with 12 disciples eating their last meal together and we find an interesting scenario. What we find is Jesus makes a statement and the statement that he makes is there will be one who will betray me. Now, we find that Peter, he, whom we've learned, leans over to John and asks John to inquire who it is that's going to betray me. And so... We find John, now watch this, the Bible points this out. We find John leaning back into the bosom or the breast or the chest of Christ. And he therefore inquires of Christ and says, Master, who is the one that's going to betray you? You know, I find it interesting that in a room full of close followers, only one knew how to lean 
on the chest of Christ to hear his voice speak. Only one knew how to captivate the Lord's attention in a room full of emotional people at that particular moment. Only one knew how to hear the heart's desire of the Lord as the Lord was ready to release his heart. Can I ask you this morning, and as we just ponder upon the word today, can I ask you, how many of us today are leaning upon the heart of Christ? I mean, we have been leaning on so many things, leaning on so many uh, politicians and so much stuff that's around us, leaning on people we have no business leaning on, and yet throughout all of it, throughout all the things that we face and all the things we go through, we have forgotten how to lean back on Jesus. We used to sing it in a hymn, leaning and leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. My God, it's about time that the America and churches all over this world learn how to lean on God, lean and walk by faith, not worry about how the economic status quo is, not worrying about, about what's fed or what's popular, learning how to lean on Jesus, learning how to trust in his everlasting arms, trusting and believing on the word of God, letting God be God. God, not only in our churches, but letting God be God in our homes, mm-hmm. within our children. Come on. Come on. We need God today. Amen. That's right. And so, how many of our churches today, people within our churches, how many of believers today are leaning on the chest of Christ, feeling the warm breath of from his lungs, from coming out of his mouth, exhaling upon our faces. How many of us are allowing ourselves to feel the nestling comfort of Christ when he puts his arms around us to let us know that he loves us without even having to say a word? You know, we don't have to go to all these conferences. It's war- I thank God for conferences. I thank God for moves of God. I thank God for revivals. But, you know, it's not about having to travel every, everywhere. It's not about listening to another man's version of what the Bible says. Let me tell you something. It's one thing to be in the same room with the Lord, but it is another thing to be able to hear his voice. I'm here to tell you that God is speaking today to the church. He's speaking to you. He's speaking to me. He's speaking to anyone who has an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to us. And I don't know about you, but it's time to get that spiritual uh, Q-tip out and start cleaning out our ears and start unclogging the mess that been coming in. I mean, my goodness, we got we got iPods, we got we got all this stuff that we, all these young people plug in there. And thank God for it, man. My son the other day he bought this phenomenal um, um, uh, headphones. He said, "Dad, you got to check this out. Listen to the bass." He says, and how it rumbles. He said, "You can feel it all the way through your head." I put that thing on. And I said, my gracious, buddy, that's, that's something else. You can literally hear and feel the bass vibrating. But let me tell you something. This world's so consumed with feeling in every empty space in their life with all the noises and all the stuff that we do not have an ear to hear God. God is speaking to the church. Are we listening? Are we truly hearing God speak to us? You know... It's more than leaving church services wrapped up in oil dripping from our foreheads. It's more than leaving prayer lines walking to the world and making no impact at all. It's more than hopping in our vehicles trying to find the fastest route GPS will take us home. And be like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Who, who walked going about doing their duties and walking by hurting people that's on the road beside them. My God, it's a, listen, if we want to have church and we want to see a move of God hit America, it's time to look on the sides of the road. It's time to look at hurting people. It's time to hear the voice of God crying out, feed my sheep, bring the healing to the hurting, bring hope to the helpless. My God, it's time to reach out with the arms of Christ. Be let his nail hands come upon our hands and reach out and touch those whom we need to touch. Amen. Hallelujah. And so, 
so many of us today seemingly unawarely to be passing by so many people who are desperate for the oil and wine of healing. So many people today needs healing, and not just physical healing, mental healing, emotional healing, family healing. So many broken homes today, so many broken relationships today, so many broken people today, and yet we walk by we're trying to get our Pentecostal hat on and try, come on, trying to get our Pentecostal day. Oh, you know, I'm, look, I've been raised in Pentecost, and I'm, I, you know, I grew up, if we're not having churches, unless we're swinging by the pe- chandeliers and c- crawling over all the pews. And I'm one of those, I'm ready for the next Pentecostal move and dance and jump. But let me tell you something that I'm interested in. I'm interested in the heart of mankind. I'm interested in seeing Jesus reaching the heart of people. And I'm interested in being a tool that he can use. It's not about the name. It's not about how many people showed up in church. It's about when two or three gather together in his name. The Bible says he's right here in the midst. And I don't know about you, whether we are here this morning or whether you're watching by internet, I feel the presence of God in this house this morning. God is on the move. I don't know what kind of God other people serve, but my Bible tells me that this earth is God's footstool. That means God is resting upon the earth with a heavy foot. Think about it. You, you driving, dr- drove by people on the road who has road rage. Come on. And they put that foot down on that gas pedal, and the next thing you know, they're riding your bumper. They're in a hurry to try to get somewhere. And while they're in a hurry, you're just trying to go the limit. And they're in a hurry to get some. Let me tell you something. There comes a time when God puts his pedal to the metal and he lets everything just thrush how he needs to thrush in our life that we no longer survive, but we, come on. We start to thrive in God's presence and we now recognize it's no longer us in control. Who's in control? God. Oh, my, my, my. Hallelujah. And so, back to our point. How many of us today, how many of the church world today are hearing the heartbeat of Christ? You know, I recently did some research in preparing for this message this morning. And I came across some researchers from Bar Bar Island University of Israel. They did a research back in December 2011. And it was a study from infant behavior and development researchers. They found something awesome. And I want to share that with you today. They found that mothers... And three-month-old children, or infants, should I say, when they were res- observed looking at each other face-to-face in interaction, while the cardiac output was being collected from the mother and child, they analyzed the mother and the child emotions, meaning they looked at how they gazed at one another. They looked at how their vocal tones were being communicated back and forth while monitoring the heart. They looked at the affectionate words and loving, kind, tender things that the mother would release to the child. And through that study, they found that, this is neat, they found that the child, the three-month-old child and the mother's heart can become synchronized. I'm going to let that sink in. Think about that. God made us however he chose, chose to make us. And however he chose to make us, he allowed kind of unity to come within people. It, you know, and that's why you, you find people today, especially watching and look on TV, the first thing uh, the young adults say when they're on TV, what is it? Hi, Mom. Right? Why is that? It's because there's that interconnection. There's that moment where the, the child and the mother becomes one and becomes in unity. Well, what's going on? Listen. Now get back to a point. <clears throat> God is calling the church back to gazing 
at the face of Christ, looking back into his eyes, looking deep into his heart, listening to the voice of God. He is a place where we learn how to lean on the Father nestled in his care. It's a place where we learn how to hear the deepest thoughts and listen to the inhale and the exhale of Christ. It's a place when we hear the rhythm of his heart echoing with every beat to a lost and to a dying world, maybe just for a moment. Maybe from the time John laid his head on Christ's chest, from the time he asked the question, John might have had a realization that he was listening to something that was life-changing. That meant that same breath that he was listening to with his own ear was the same breath that God knelt down at Adam and breathed into the the nostrils of Adam and gave breath. It's the same breath that God allowed Ezekiel to release upon the valley of dry bones and the bones stood up erect and flesh and blood started coming together and veins and all these things started working together. It's that same breath that was breathing on the day of Pentecost when 120 were in the upper room and there 120 were filled with the Holy Ghost and the fire and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit it gave them utterance. And it's the same breath that God's wanting to release back into the church. <laughs> Maybe for a moment when John heard the heartbeat of Jesus that God had echoed into his spirit his destiny. Because once you learn to synchronize your heart with the heart of Christ... Once you learn to line yourself up with what God's getting ready to do, guess what he starts doing? He starts revealing to you destiny for your life. He starts revealing to you the things that were, had been hidden from you. You've been fasting. You've been praying. You've been seeking God for an answer. But listen, we've been leaning on other things and then learning how to lean on Christ. We've understood that. We've talked about that. So once we get back and leaning on Christ, once we realize it's not about my heart's desires, but it's about him. Jesus gave the example in the Garden of Gethsemane when he said, Lord, not my will but thine, right? So being that, we come to a moment in time that we learn how to lean the, the, on the chest of the Father to hear his heartbeat, that God starts speaking into our destiny, starts revealing to us things that he has planted and pointed into our lives and into our hearts. In the very moment of hearing the heartbeat of Christ, that's when we receive direction for our life. When you put your ear to the heartbeat of Christ, his heart causes our heart to start synchronized with his. And let me tell you something, you'll never be the same. You'll never be the same once God starts touching you. You'll never be the same when God starts speaking to you. Listen, all God has to do is speak one word and everything has to change. We, we've seen that example through the whole book of Genesis when God spoke to all these things and things started to happen. All he had to do was speak a word, one word. You didn't have to have a whole sentence, a whole paragraph. You didn't have to have to write that down for somebody to remind you about. All he has to do was speak one word. And things inside of you come alive. Uh, why? Because when we, the creation, connect to the creator, we are connecting to the true source of what we are created to become. And when we learn to realize and recognize who is God, I learned that in my early years of pastoring. We were praying and fasting over this one woman, elderly woman in our church, she had this disease, and you know we've been seeing signs and wonders in our churches, in our church specific, specifically, and in this moment early, in, in being in this particular church I'm in at now, uh, uh, we were praying. We 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 knew the seat she sat in. Come on, because we know uh, all of us regular church folks have the sign seats. <laughs> Come on. <clears throat> so we knew the seat she would sit in every morning, and then I, I would go in my prayer time. Brother, and I would be praying. I'll go over and praying over that seat. Lord, bring healing to this sister. God, you're going to have to touch her. God, nobody was watching. No one. I just wanted God to do something for that lady. Everybody was believing for that lady. And guess what happened?
tell you what happened. God spoke through me and said, I am God and you are not. Well, that was an eye opener. To, to, to be told by God that you're not God. Well, that humbled you real quick. It brought reality pretty fast. And so I realized that I was praying something that's already against that woman's heart. She was ready to die to go meet Jesus. And here I am, was calling down the angels, calling down fire from heaven. Call it, I said, God, whatever you got to do, you got to heal this woman. And here's God saying, I am God and you are not. How do we learn these things? How do we come to that point of fully wrapping ourselves, of recognizing that he is God? Listen, we can go through the spiritual checklist of all the things that we think that we can do to get God's attention. We've been, come on now, we've all done it. Maybe I'm the only one in this place, and only one from the internet, who's done it by themselves. We've done it. Listen, we, we, we've done the fasting, we've done the prayer, we've done all these things hoping that I can get God's attention to move on my behalf. Listen, we even had prayer chains. You know that one? Prayer chain. We all look, lock ourselves up and get connected with one another. Come on, let's believe, let's pray. Yeah, I believe that too, but let me tell you something. What's going to move the heart of God? Let me tell you how it works. What is truly going to move the heart of God is when we, the body of Christ, start knowing God's heart. Start recognizing what God wants instead of what we want. Start hearing his voice as he is speaking. Because as I said earlier, God is speaking to the church, but are we hearing? It's time to push back. Mm, don't get mad at me when I say this. Push back Pentecostal religion. Push back church social religion. Push back all that junk. Get it out of the way now. It's not about independent or denomination. It's about knowing the heart of God, getting back in touch with the Father, and let God be God in us. It's that when people see us, they don't see me or you. They sense the power of God. Well, how do you know that, Pastor Lynn? I'll tell you. I am reminded in the, in the fact of the New Testament here, Peter was walking by, and people just wanted Peter to come touch, touch me. Come on, lay your anointed hand on me so I can get healed. Right? Come on, slap a word on me so I know God pays attention to me. I've been raised in Pentecost, so I know how this works. I, and jokingly, I've, I, I've, I've even made the statement that I've cut my teeth on the pew. So, knowing this, <laughs> knowing all this and how God operates and how God's moving, Peter, here he is. He doesn't reach out and touch a person. What happens? His shadow just passes by. And because he was fulfilling the heart of the Father. Whew, did you just feel it go up? I did. Because he was fulfilling the heart of the Father. Keep playing, brother. Keep playing. Keep playing, brother. Keep playing. The anointing was being released. God wants to release the anointing back in his church. He wants to do it. Fulfill it, not by a, a, a name brand preacher, not by someone whom you've heard of or know of. Guess who wants to do it through? You. You. Us. We, the people, the body of Christ, the collective church. Listen to me. I'm not going to hold you much longer. But listen to me. 
David understood this. I believe when he was worshiping God, at the moment of his cry, at the moment of his desperation, at the moment of here he is in the presence of God and all he can do is cry, tears. I can just see David profusively, the tears just running down his face because he just been in the presence of God and he grabs a pen and, and as he tries to etch out the words that's upon his heart, he starts etching out Psalms 42, 1 and 2. He says, as the deer pants after the water, but so my soul longs for you. And he goes on to say, my soul thirst for God. For the living God. And he says, when shall I come and appear before God? He had just stepped out of God's presence. And there he is still longing to get back in. Getting back to the heart of Christ. And so. And so. We find out now. We look back at John. He becomes exposed to leaning on the chest of Christ from John 13. He hears the heartbeat of Christ. And from hearing the heartbeat of Christ, he receives a revelation. Could it be from that moment when he heard the very thump? Could it be? When he heard the vowels, the arteries thumping with the very blood that was to be later spilled. He starts to catch a vision of revelation. And from the revelation comes revelations. And he says... Revelation 3.20, he says, he speaks the word of Christ. See, God wants to fill these people up quick. Because see, what God's getting ready to do is a quick move. It's not going to take forever. How God's going to do it, it's going to be quick. In a moment. In a second. It's going to happen so quick. You're going to be so astonished how quick God does it and how quick God moves you have to look back twice because if you look and get your eye off of what God's getting ready to do, you're going to miss it. And he says, from the book of Revelations, he releases a revelation from Christ. And he says, Revelations 3.20, he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him. I will dine with him and he with me. Then he finishes that chapter with verse 22. He says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Can we stand up this morning? Those of you watching by the internet, just lift up your hands. I want you just to play a worship. Can you do that? Just play something. <clears throat> just lift up your hands all over this place. There, there's a Spirit of God. And if, you, if there are any ministers here, I know my brother, I'm not trying to take over. I apologize. But I'm just going to follow the lead of the Spirit. Just lift up your hands. And those of you watching by internet, just lift up your hands where you're at. Let God touch you where you're at this morning. You may not have been able to have been here today, but guess what? God can be anywhere. He's omnipresence. And I believe as you just lift up your hands and start worshiping God, and I believe you'll start recognizing the voice of God speaking to you where you're at. Lift up your hands. Cry out to God. Say, God, I am in need of you. That's right, brother. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, yes, Lord. Yeah, yes. Hallelujah. Lord, we need you today. We need you today, God. We need you. Lord, speak. Speak into us. Speak into our hearts today. God, it's not about mine. It's not about my will. It's not about having any person touch me. It's about being touched by God. It's about when Jacob was wrestling with God. Man didn't touch him. God touched him because when God did it, things changed. His walk changed. 
His appearance had to change. He had to learn to readapt. Lord, teach us today, God. Right now, Lord, we release healing. Lord, we release healing for our services for the rest of the day. Lord, you see those that are coming in that are sick, those that are coming in, Lord, that, that are, are, are weary and heavy laden, God, we bond oppression. We bond depression. We bind lack right now in the name of Jesus. We release the anointing. Lord, your word tells us it's the anointing that destroys every yoke. Right now, God, we release the anointing. We bind the every demonic force. We bind every stronghold of the devil right now. Lord, we call forth revival to hit this place. We call forth revival to hit our churches. We're tired of the mundane. We're tired of going through the same thing. We're tired of going through this one cycle after next. We need a move of God. And we need a people who's going to cry out and spare not. We need a people, God, who's going to call forth the Spirit of God from heaven and say, God, you have to pour on us or we die. You have to release on us or we die this is do or die Lord Lord do it do it in us Jesus hallelujah 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 if there's ministers here this morning if you're here and you want to help minister if you feel God speaking to your spirit we just encourage you to do that today and let God operate I apologize but let God operate. Let Him flow in your life today. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, brother. Take over that mic. Anybody want some prayer? Come on up now. We always need more of Him, so. <laughs> we need less of us, so. There's something you would need specifically, or you just want a general touch of the Lord. Come on up.
Hallelujah. We're just going to pray over this ministry. Father, in the name of Jesus, as this ministry is endeavoring of having a heart of God, of fire, Lord, as this ministry is endeavoring as pursuing God, Lord, it, it, it takes work. No one, no one wants the work. They just want the reward. But, Lord, <laughs> you tell us in the word that if we're faithful in the few, you'll make us rulers over many. And, Father, as this ministry is continuing to be faithful, Lord, we release, Lord, your angels to encamp about around this place. Lord, protect this ministry. Protect it from words of, 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 the, of the enemy that might try to slander and demeanor what God wants to do. Lord, that we not despise little beginnings. Lord, that we step in, that this ministry will step into the full thrush of what you're getting ready to release. And God, that not even Gettysburg can hold what God's getting ready to do. Lord, we release it right now. In the name of Jesus, that anointing. <laughs> in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, just remember we have services at 2 o'clock and at 7 o'clock.